Hello, 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 and welcome. It is so great to be here hosting Endo Symbiotic Love live with me, your host, RJ. And me, the hostess with the most, this Yasmin. Yes, as I say, I'm RJ. I'm wearing a golden black jacket tonight, which is velvet, a black t shirt. I'm tanned, I'm 29, I have brown eyes, dark hair. Um, behind me is our logo, Endo Symbiotic Love Live, uh, on a white back screen, some books a keyboard and a guitar, which I've never played because I'm not a musician, but that's just how I roll. What about you, Yasmin? Lovely, well, I have to say, I love your jackets, very, very in at the moment. Um, so me, I am a beautiful 24 year old. I've got long hair. Um, my background's a bit colorful, but I've got some lovely plants chilling with me. Um, I've got a leopard print dress. Um, because we all need a little bit of leopard print in our lives. So let's get to it because we've got a show to give you. So tonight we're gonna be back um, by popular demand. Um, we've got the microbial fashion police oh. with us um, and we're going to be showing you the Endosymbiotic Love Collective 2021 new microbial calendar. Um, as you may or may not be aware, me and RJ have been, um, have been working very closely together, um, along with some scientists and artists to bring this calendar to you. And it basically just represents the amazing diversity that we live in with lots of microbes, parasites, viruses, bacteria, um, yeah. So much going on, yes. And tonight for the first time, we will be sharing and exploring all this wonderful work. Now, you can leave comments and questions and we encourage it because we're gonna try and answer and read out your comments. But I will say this, don't be a dick because we will block you, just saying. Um, but don't forget as well, and this is the really fun part and this is why we're here tonight, to actually go to our website and buy this fabulous calendar, which I'm holding up here, like, uh, like I'm in a boxing ring. Uh, loving it. That's the calendar. And now you can get this for £15, which, you know, I, is a wonderful, wonderful price. And for 50% of that, um, £15 will go to the Outdoor Project. Now, if you know, don't know who they are, they are a wonderful organization that supports LGBTQI homeless communities. And they do amazing work. So you can really keep these people warm at winter and help out, help, you know, help the, the need at Christmas. So uh, let's move on. Now, to get the actual calendar is endolove.slyrabbit.net and get your 2021 calendar. You won't regret it. And we'll show you all why now. Perfect. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's coming up tonight on tonight's show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got a very special VVV IP guest, Conway McDermott, who's going to be with us um, tonight um, for a very unique one-off um, performance. And they will also be joining us for an interview um, to talk about their experiences working on the Endosymbiotic Love Project. Yeah. And for the first time, we will be showing you all at home interviews of all your favorite bacterias and parasites and viruses and microbes that were filmed by the fabulous Sophie Broadgate during the making of this calendar and it's including the scientists and the other artists as well so we'll meet the whole team. Mm -hmm. And if that was not enough um, we're also going to be joined by the troublesome twosomes the endosymbiotic love agony aunts. Um, so this notorious pair of millennial YouTubers will be answering all of your parasitic and microbial problems. Yes, and let's not forget the moment you've all been waiting for, we have the microbial memes. So with that, let's start the show with the first microbial fashion police segment. Uh, and I think we should start with where we're living right now in the present. Let's go to winter. Welcome to winter. <laughs> and what better way of going into winter with this, what can only be described as a freaking Vogue magazine shop. And also, I recognise someone in this picture, uh, not just a scientist or a pretty face, 
So let's, because you actually are in the picture and you, you work with Lishmania as well. Take us through the concept. Because I, because I work with Leishmania every day and I feel like Leishmania is kind of my mate. I didn't want to be dressed enough as it. So I thought I will be there surrounded with Leishmania. There's a macrophage in the, in the middle that is being surrounded by all these Leishmania parasites. Knowing that it's going to be infected with a Leishmania parasite and it's going to go through a slow, horrible death. So I wanted to put a little bit of myself in it. So I have like a Ghanaian print like dress that I've got on. I brought some bin bags from the lab to show that it's, you know, something that you work with in the lab. I mean, honestly, this is such a beautiful piece of work. Okay, let's go on to January. So we are in January and we've got neurons. I like how there's two. Two little communicators, uh, Adam and Steve. I thought it yeah. was Neil and Ewan. Adam and Steve is the concept. I didn't know this, but neurons actually create, there's a family tree. There's actually a history in their DNA. And, and even if they disappear and form new organisms and stuff in your body and communicate with other things, there's a genealogy to it. There's definitely uh, relationships mm -hmm. constantly. I just realized how colorful winter is in this calendar. I like the fact it is, because it can be a very hard time for people. I always kind of get very down in winter. I'm quite happy that we've chosen really bright, blasty, strong images. This reminds me quite, well, probably because it's like a network, but it reminds me of the, the fungal network that we had previously. It doesn't keep me warm though, this picture. But there's random bits though. There's like the, I think it's, it's cold because it's, you know, January but then there's random little bits of pink. So that, like those little bits make you feel sort of warm and cozy. Should we go to the last image of uh, winter? Yeah. Should we do that? Like I, I, I love this image so much. Yeah. It just brings me so much happiness. Like, oh, maybe it's just cause I love pink. It's so sweet and cozy. You feel like it's a big warm hug. But that is the epitome of what yeast is, in my opinion. A big warm you know, hug. Oh my God, yeah. Yeast really? is like, for me, yeah, because it, 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 it creates everything that mm -hmm. I find comforting. Bread, red wine, beer. Did I mention bread? And, and the other thing that I love about yeast, and I think they've done really well in this picture, and winter, is it makes things rise. Spring's on its yeah. way. I've enjoyed winter. I've enjoyed the winter mm -hmm. collection. Well. That is all we have time for on this segment. But after the break, we will be right back with some more chatter, chitter, chatter. Did you see me and Yeast matching? Like, did, did you did you see it? So that really <laughs> was chemistry. So um, let's bring some of that love to this party, please. Um, RJ, can you tell us what's coming up next? I think the party's all in that beautiful leopard print dress, to be honest. I think everyone should get one. I'm just jealous that I can't get it. Uh, yes, I'm really excited to see what's up next because it's time for probably one of the most famous segments on this show. Welcome back to Microbial Memes. So, as you might already know, um, the amazing tech team that we've got likes to find uh, memes for us to re like react to. And obviously, to go with the whole show, they've decided to find some microbial memes. So we'll see what they are and react to them. Are you ready, RJ? Oh my God, yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, that's quite, that is quite smart. I think I get it. I feel like... Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like you're going to get a lot of these. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> to... And I'm just going to be left going, oh. Come on, you that's... get it. It's a virus. The virus attacking the cell and like giving it all the DNA and shit and being like, replicate oh, me, okay. bitch. Protein. Yeah. Okay. Protein okay. And... Protein <laughs> printer. Go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get you. <laughs> okay, great. I'm slow. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice one. I like it. Uh, I it's approve. cute. I approve. It's <laughs> okay, so next one. I approve. Why did she shoot herself stuck in the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my 
my god, that is so true. Because the other thing with this is that I feel like this is very COVID. <laughs> this is so COVID. Literally, we've all turned into microbiologists. Microbial memes. Number three. Anything you want to be when you grow up. Oh! That's, that's very political, isn't it? That's so cute! <laughs> oh! We're like a one in a trillion. It's something ridiculous like that. Like, we are, you and me, had a one, we were, we, we were like a trillion percent away of not even existing. We won the race. We won the race. Yeah. We won that's, the race. We so so <laughs> yeah. No one else. No one else. We we won the race. We <laughs> girl in the leopard skin, boy in the gold, won the race. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I that's I I I don't know why this triggered that in me. Well, it, I know why because it's about birth. It is very sentimental. It's cute. Yeah, it's very cute. I like it. Very cute. <laughs> oh, memes. Oh, I wish this was the video. The, <laughs> the whole show is just going to be this. I, I'll be honest. Li I don't are. know if I get this. Yeah, I don't get this. So lymphocytes are like, they're one of our immune cells that we have in our body. So when they see like a pathogen, which is like a, a microbe or something in our body that shouldn't be there. So they spot it and then they engulf it. They're like complete, they like swallow it up and like digest it and kill it. You're a, you're a very dramatic teacher. I like it. You're like, they swallow it and they digest it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, this is great. The last segment of memes was uh, about, I don't know, what people did on a Friday night, I think. This is very sophisticated. Mm. <laughs> I am getting very lost in the meme reactions. Um, I'm just being honest. I'm, <laughs> I hope you're all at home as confused as I am. So, <laughs> so what? Hmm. So what is chondria? So it's like so mitochondria is one of the organelles in our cells. It's supposed to be like so like everyone's like mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So then it's like uh, might and then. Oh no! I have heard yeah. that. I have heard yeah. that. Okay. That's like okay. what everyone gets from like GCSE biology, mitochondria powerhouse of the cell. Oh well, that was a dig. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> that's, what <laughs> that's what everyone gets from GCSE. Well, I've got news for you, Yasmin. I didn't do GCSE biology clearly because I don't remember that lesson. Oh my God. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that hurt. Oh, that hurt. No, it was quite funny. Um, I did go to biology, I just didn't really pay attention, to be honest. Alright, okay. That's a good one, too. Yeah. I, I, where's she from? Game of Thrones. Ah! That's what she's in, isn't it? Uh, everyone was, like, obsessed with it. But I was, I, I was trying to be cool. I was trying to be one of those people that's like, I'm not going to watch it, I'm too cool for this. And then now <laughs> I'm like, I wish I watched it. You know what they call people like you? Hipsters. I wish. I have to say that that was a very specific uh, meme section. Um, and I hope that I didn't come across that stupid. So, welcome back from my heckling segment. Oh, come on. I love your heckle. I love your laugh. Why does no one like their laugh? No. No. I, it's true, isn't it? Like, no one likes their own love. I, I hate mine, but people seem to like it as well. But anyway. Now, Yasmin, we never actually got round to this question, so I'm going to ask you it now. What was actually your favourite meme? Ooh, that is a difficult one. I really enjoyed all of them. Um, let me think, let me think. 
I think the lymphocytes, you know, like the when the lymphocytes looking at the, like the pathogen, that one, because just looking at that meme, I can remember like the video and like the actual original meme. And um, obviously at the moment, our immune system being good and it being like a pandemic and everything that's going on, lymphocytes, we love you. So yeah, that one, how about yours? I mean, I still don't understand them. Um, so, you know, let's move on. Uh, now, Yasmin, why don't you tell the audience, because this is, this is quite a special one. We're actually doing two segments in one, aren't we? Yes, so we why are. Don't we, why, don't we, why don't we share that with the audience, you know, you know, darling? <laughs> so up next for you special, special watchers, we've got our spring and summer season, two in one. Let's go. So Yasmin, spring, 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 my mother's favourite time of year. Are we going to start with bacteriophage? This is an amazing piece. Also, what I love about this is how colourful it is. And it reminds me of spring, like things are starting to build again. Things are starting to come into fruition again. There's so much going on. I think I'd like to know more about bacteriophage. They're basically viruses that infects and attacks bacteria. But when you have a look at them, they've got this headpiece um, and then like a body and then the, the little legs. So the, the um. legs kind of go onto the bacteria and it, it shrinks and that middle bit, the tail ends up penetrating the bacteria. This head that contains this chaotic mix of like DNA, RNA, proteins, just everything ends up being expelled into the bacteria and all of this stuff allows them to be replicated within the bacteria. So next um, we have April which is the tulip breaking virus. So this virus basically infects tulip bulbs. It causes the the colours in the tulips to break. Um, yeah this is and it's such a spring piece isn't it? The textures, the colours, the pink but this is definitely my favorites in the calendar. I think it's quite interesting like looking at it so it's it represents the tulip breaking virus it links to the idea of the like beauty standards and what you know as humans we see as beautiful and it works. So do you think this is a good representation of that? Mm -hmm. Definitely because mm -hmm. in the image you can see stretch marks but that kind of looks you know when you see those Rembrandt um, tulips mm -hmm. with the kind of striations in them it kind of looks like that so the next one is may which is cordyceps this is a super interesting fungi that's parasitic to insects so they attack insects and grow, take charge of the insect so it basically ends up being a zombie this picture kind of looks exactly like what an insect infected with the fungi and I love the character, I love the concept. It's got a Britishness to it that I really love and this, this kind of horror vibe to it, um, really playing mm -hmm. on that zombie narrative. Even just looking at the face, the, like, the facial expression is like, I am done, take me to summer, please, please. It's so natural, it just feels like you're celebrating the earth in your zombiness and horror. I love it. I, it's so much fun in this picture, it's great. So we have popped into June, summer mm -hmm. season. So she is a wonderful microbe that is parasitic. And I, can you kind of guess what kind of symptoms you would get just from looking at the picture? Oh, I, 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 <laughs> those symptoms, babe, I tell you what. I think it's like a pinup girl after a night out not really sure what's happened during the night out. She's got her little gown with like fluffy bits on it. She's got her <laughs> curls on. She just looks like a bad bitch. Yeah, I, I like the whole like bathtub thing because you can't yeah. kill Jaradia with chlorine. It's protected in a shell. So it's like really, really hardcore and like water, chlorine, bath kind of goes together. It's really a bad bitch. Um, and I, so like the whole look just goes perfectly with it. You're just looking pretty for the boys. 
and the girls yeah. and everything in between. So, second part of the, the summer season is cowpox. I feel like what he's done here, because cowpox is quite vicious, and I feel like what he's done here is made it look really beautiful. So he's got a real respect for them because they're, they're very intelligent. And also, I think smallpox is the only thing that's ever actually been eradicated. You can definitely see it in a magazine. It's just, yeah, blending in with nature because it's a zoonotic virus. So it makes sense being outside. And it, it looks like the, the greenery is very, very summer. It's actually something I probably would wear. And I'm not just saying that for the TV show. <laughs> it's just the little details, like the gloves, the little headpiece. We kind of associate cowpox as bad, but he's flipping that by making it beautiful. And I... And intelligent. I like it. I really, really enjoy this piece. But let's have a look at the end of summer. Shigella! That looks like someone. How did you go from this intestinal bacteria, which basically it gives you the shits, right? Yeah. When once it's in there, it actually forms its own syringe mm -hmm. and invades your intestine. And eventually, if you leave, if you don't get it fixed, it does so much damage just from the intestine that it can actually get to your brain eventually. You talked about a bad bitch earlier. Mm -hmm. Man, Shigella is one evil queen. How it's transmitted is through the mouth mm -hmm. and eating with dirty hands or not washing your hands. So I really like the idea that we, we kind of focused on the head for that reason. I've not worked with bacteria before, but like when I've had bacterial contamination in my media, the kind of all the bacteria kind of clumping together and like kind of forming... I don't know, little clumps. It kind of looks like that. A summer headpiece of Shigella. Okay, I think we should move on to autumn. Wow! What a great season of fashion. Oh my gosh, that is... Oh, okay, 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 we're back. So... <laughs> Do not forget that you can buy the calendar from our website um, for £15 and 50% of that will go to the Outdoor Project. Um, that, and they are a community um, charity for LGBTQI plus homeless communities. So get a beautiful calendar that you can have in your home or give to someone for Christmas, plus support such an amazing cause like win win for you so the website for that again is endolove.slyrabbit.net and get your 2021 calendar yes and the hashtag for that uh is hashtag endolove so you know go and tweet and do whatever you lovely people do now i've just realized looking at the zombie fungus yasmin that it looks like me after a saturday night but the good news is i'm not prince andrew so, you know, you win some, you lose some. Now, um, now we have, I've got some special questions from the audience, which I'm gonna ask you, Yasmin, because they, apparently no one cares about me. They're all for you. So this is from, what's the question here? This is from Sophie. And she has asked, if you were a parasite, what would you be? Ooh. A good oh, question, right? That is. So, okay, the boring like answer would be leash mania because I think they're so cool and I work with them. But if it wasn't leash mania, it would have to be schistosoma. Um, so they are, well, it is, they are um, beautiful parasites and they actually like meet. So a male and a female would meet in the, in the human body and they would mate and chill together and they can also like go through a divorce so it's like going through a whole romantic story in our bodies so i think that's that's pretty cool i'll choose to be there i think yeah wow. they're cool i like them wow that's very christmasy as well i like the romance and the the coziness yeah that's a good choice uh, and dennis has asked Ooh. what's special about science engagement projects like this? Dennis, that was a good question. <laughs> so, why, why? so I think, obviously I would say this project is amazing and you know, yeah, I would say that because I'm in it. 
but I think it actually is <laughs> biased. <laughs> <laughs> but I honestly do think that it's quite a unique, um, like art, science, engagement kind of project um, because it aims towards like adults. And I think sometimes the adult community as adults gets left out in science engagement and why you know we want to have fun we want to learn about some fun science stuff so if you can make science fun for adults why don't you and I think this this project does that you know put a little bit of makeup on it sprinkle some glitter and you're sorted yeah I agree and I also like it as an artist that we can merge two very different worlds that actually have vast amounts of similarities together. So, um, you know, there's that as well. And I agree, there isn't, you know, some, you know, we focus a lot on youth and that's beautiful and great and we should continue to do that. But, you know, we shouldn't just become redundant. So continue learning in fun, creative ways. Yeah, I agree. Um, now, you watching, I we have the specialist of, uniquest of wonderful treats for you. Uh, as we turn over to a fabulous artist who's been on this project, who has done possibly one of the best sketches that I've seen for a while, I saw in rehearsal. Yasmin, why don't you introduce it though? Yes, yes, we have been waiting for this. So Conway, or should I say Yeast, AKA Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So they are here with us and they're going to perform for their lives for us. So um, over to you, Conway. Hi, welcome to Endosymbiotic Love Live. My name is Conway. I'm a fat, white, trans drag artist. I'm currently in clown drag, so I have a white face, red nose, red cheeks, thick green eyebrows, uh, a little red moustache that I've drawn on over my real moustache. And I have a big black kind of sad clown-like mouth. Um, underneath the white clown mask, uh, I've painted my neck and head blue. And I have long curly green hair, which is my real hair, not a wig. And if it is a wig, it's a clearly, clearly a very expensive, beautiful wig. And not a cheap one. And if anyone tells you different, she's mean and don't listen to her. So I want to perform for you a piece that I wrote yesterday about human networks and microbial networks, the microbial forest network that connects all the forests of the earth, and why I would rather be a part of the microbial network than the human ones. Hang on. Just make sure we're starting my beautiful instrumental piece that I recorded yesterday on my Shetty Casio from the beginning. Thank you. Theatre is a network Its heritage is regal But up until the 60s Showing homos was illegal And high school is a network where we learn how to resist. But as a teenage dyke, I learned that I did not exist. And memory is a network that we learn throughout our lives. But a generation of queer memory was left to die. But don't we look good on your funding applications? Don't we look good on the paperwork? Yes, Queen Baby Dyke, Tom of Finland's motorbike, gender fuckers like RuPaul, Opulence, you own it all. The last real punks are in queer culture and straight people are fucking vultures. You want us all to be on the same side, but you still can't keep trans kids alive and they're taking away our health care and you don't care. No, you don't care. Yes, queen, serve. 
Facebook is a network, and it loves a show of pride. Almost as much as it loves fake news, propaganda, let in dangerous lives. When Russian oligarchs get pensive, well, solidarity gets expensive, and yeah, Pride React won't raise the dead. So if you're not with us, then we know you're against us. But we look good on their diversity statement. We look so good on the paperwork. Yes, Queen Baby Dyke, Tom of Finland's motorbike, gender fuckers and RuPaul. Don't you think you own it all? The last real punk is queer culture and straight people are fucking vultures. You want us all to be on the same side. One in four trans kids attempt suicide and we're taking away their health care and you don't care. No, you don't care. Yes, queen. Sir. And when I die, and darkness closes in, my human thoughts at last extinguish in. When my heart can beat no more, take me to the forest floor. Let me join up with a network that is happy to ignore. If I am strange, if I am wrong, if I am man or I'm woman, and who I loved and who I fucked, and if my chromosomes were crooked, if I wore what I was meant to wear, named myself after a Welsh river, and every lovely thing about me human network don't deserve all the things you don't deserve that you never deserved and the National Trust Forest Registry can write a blog post about me. They'll put me down on their funding applications. They'll put me down on their Diversity statements. Fat trans artists buried there, releasing spores into the air. Microbial network spreading out across the earth. And the pain of being human, I won't even remember. And it'll be too late for healthcare. But I won't care. No, I won't care. Yes, Queen, serve. So, um, you may have noticed one of the themes of the song is a lack of health care for trans people. Uh, in particular, legislation was just passed which will deny trans youth access to hormone blockers, which can be used to delay their puberty until they are 18 and able to choose to go through either the puberty that their uh, kind of cis body uh, would put you through, the natural kind of release of estrogen or testosterone, um, or one that is aligned with whatever gender they are currently experiencing. Access to hormone blockers for many trans like if you're a cis if you grow up and you grow out of it and you go on hormone blockers, all it means 
is that you go through your puberty when you're 18 instead of when you're 15 or 14 or whatever. It doesn't make any huge difference to anyone's life. If you are trans and you don't have access to them, then it means you go through a puberty that you cannot reverse. You go through changes to your body that will, down the road, require surgical intervention if you want to medically transition, um, and huge quantities of grief and trauma that is completely unnecessary. Um, if you are an ally of the queer community, if you're watching this and uh, enjoying trans art, the, the art of trans people, the art of queer people, or if you're here for the science, the science is on the side of um, giving trans people dignity and access to healthcare. So I'm going to ask anyone watching this, anyone who consumes queer art, to reach out to your member of parliament and ask them to push back against this piece of legislation that is going to cause just enormous quantities of harm um, in denying trans youth access to care uh, without a court order. Um, and on that happy note, enjoy the rest of the show. Well, that was, I, I just wish there was an audience to give Conway a round of applause there. That was one of the most provocative things. I absolutely love that. Um, but that's not all because actually I'm not going to talk anymore because we have Conway themselves right here in the studio with us today. And I'm really excited to welcome them. Conway, are you there? Hello, I am here. I am a fat, white, trans person with um, very beautifully done pink eyebrows and a beard, um, lovely red lipstick and long lustrous curly brown hair, which is my real hair and not a wig. But if it was a wig, it's an expensive wig and not a cheap one. And anyone who tells you is a mean girl and you shouldn't listen. They would be, I, I, you are looking fantastic. I have to say fabulous is um, too, too small a word. Um, Conway, how was your lockdown? Before we get to the nitty gritty of everything, how was your lockdown? I mean, how was anyone's lockdown? It was a bit of shit, but it's all right. No, it was good. <laughs> I, I really, I got to work on a lot of really rewarding, delightful projects like this one. That's good. Yeah. So the song was beautiful. It was very fascinating and provocative. But it was quite dark, so do you want to tell us a little bit more about it, please? Um, yeah, so uh, the biggest influence for um, wanting to present the song to you guys was that while myself and Natalie, the scientist who worked on um, the Forest Networks page of the calendar, while we were kind of exploring it, we talked about the queer networks of knowledge that were lost during the AIDS crisis and about the way that human networks fail to serve and dehumanize us as queer people. Um, and we, we really talked about lots of really beautiful, uh, I think really important kind of uh, ideas that we really both wanted to bring to the project but that are very hard to convey in like one image. Um, so I really appreciated having the chance to kind of explore them a little more as part of this live show. That's, yeah, I, that's um, an incredible story. I, I can really feel that coming through as well. In the, not just in the performance, actually, but in the photo that you did together. And I'm, so, and, and actually that maybe brings us on to our next question, which is how was it, how was it working with, um, the scientists I feel like it's a good question to lead on to so I really loved it I really loved working with all three scientists um it was really it was really interesting because with uh Rod and Viv uh yeast and cordyceps um they're a married couple uh, and they've done quite a lot of creative kind of projects before this a lot of sort of science and art uh projects before this one so 
it was it was a really we we had like a we developed a really interesting kind of way of working together and i was able to bring a lot of my practice to them um and then with with natalie um as she's also a part of the queer community um it was a very different process um and we had like a lot of kind of cultural touchstones that i think were were in the same place so it was uh, yeah, it was really interesting. I learned I learned a lot from it, um, not just about microbes, but about collaboration and about the way that you can kind of work with different scientists and different ideas and backgrounds. So within the whole project and being part of the whole project, what would you say you enjoyed the most? Um, well, I would have to say receiving a calendar full of beautiful images of myself <laughs> <laughs> and no um yeah no I'm, I'm i'm greedy i love the calendar i love receiving 12 beautiful bespoke pieces of artwork that i know <laughs> like and not just mine <laughs> but yours as well uh yeah that's the highlight is getting getting free calendars the highlight is getting free calendars. Of, Absolutely. Uh, I, <laughs> and mostly your two pictures. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I love your two pictures. I think um, Yasmin took a real liking to them, actually. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, well, I completely love Yasmin's. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with one. We're just okay. in love with each other. You know. Reaction. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. <laughs> now, Conway, uh, what are you working on at the moment aside from this project? What are you up to? Oh, goodness. What am I not up to? <laughs> um, I'm a writer. I'm an artist. I work four hour shifts at the Philharmonic Hall. That's just restarted. Um, uh, I actually have another live show coming up in December with RJ Lloyd, uh, where we tell scary Christmas stories. Um, just so many things. How about you, RJ? I mean, at the moment, I'm just doing a lot of presenting, which I'm really enjoying. Um, but more about you, <laughs> less about me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it back to the project that you were part of. Um, so what do you think, like within the whole project, what, what do you think is important about it? And what like, well, how do I ask this question? Why has this project been important to you? And why do you think this project might be important in general? I think that our current perception of humanity as a I, okay, I think that we have a perception of society as it stands right now and as it is right now as being natural and uh, unchangeable and that like uh, patriarchy and kiriarchy and colonialism and monarchism, like we have an idea that these structures of power, because they seem so unmovable, that that's what's natural and that's what's correct um, and it is destroying the world. <laughs> and it's uh, keeping millions of people in oppression. And, um, and we, need to, we need to step outside of that kind of, uh, what seems like an all-consuming kind of system of society. Um, and part of that is about facing the fact that like, nature is microbes. What is natural is microbial life, is kinds of life that are so, completely alien to us um that that we can't like even kind of fathom them but like re recognizing that as like completely crucial and completely integrated with our existence um i think is important to the continuation of life on the planet earth uh <laughs> so just just a little couple of little things that i think it might be useful for just small ones that's, uh, I think you've just summed it up, to be honest. Conway, I have to say, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show, but also um, to see that performance um, 
it, it really got to me, it hit me actually. I, I haven't seen it yet. And um, yeah, I, it's, it's really important. I hope you kind of carry on. I hope this gives you more stimulus to carry on with such wonderful and beautiful work with Natalie as well. Um, is there any final words you'd like to give us? Thank you so much for having me. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Oh. And happy holidays. And etc. Uh, I, I can't wait for Christmas. I'm just going to eat loads of stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Conway. Um, we can't hear the claps, but we are clapping and they're clapping at home as well, I'm sure. So um, go on, give a kiss. Give a kiss. I'll get off camera. Moi. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, now, up next, another exclusive treat, Yasmin. Oh, my God. We are full of treats. We are full of it. Exclusive for the inclusive, babes. Do you know what I'm saying, girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Exclusive yeah. for the inclusive. Uh, don't forget, hashtag endo love. Now, enough of my cheesy host skills. Um, it's time to meet and get to know not just the team, but one of the most important parts of the team. It's also the bacterias and the microbes and the viruses and the parasites and everything else in between, but also the scientists and all the other artists that work on this project, because there's been many. Um, now, Sophie Broadgate, who is an exquisite filmmaker in Liverpool, uh, has made this film backstage and has been organizing us all. Um, so let's take a look. It was all very free form, the ideas we were exploring, but we we're sort of talking about the science and then thinking about how the science integrates into relationships and how sort of neurons are in relationships. And I said about this idea of the concept of having you two as the neurons being connected. And, and then we, because we're all gay men, we, we started talking about Adam and Steve um, and this idea of the kind of the genealogy um, of neurons because they actually have family trees. The final image we've actually ended up with, it's quite a strong like, connection with the, the audience, the person who's looking at the image. Yeah. And it's, you know, what is that, you know, interpreting that signal that's coming from that image? You know? Conway suggested a, a sort of big, flouncy pink dress. And needless to say, I thought Killing Eve, it's got to be the Killing Eve dress. So we moved forward from that. And then we started talking about how they use sugar. And this is why Conway is eating a marshmallow to represent sugar. Yeah, we talked about like trying to show yeast making all these things, making like bread and medicine and biofuel. And then said, okay, but is it like correct to the spirit of the project to look at yeast through the eyes of what it can do for humanity? Like what would yeast do if just left to its own devices? Yeah. It would just eat sugar and multiply. From the start, we had a clear idea that we wanted to create a mosaic because some of the expression of bacteriophage uh, is that on tobacco plants, yeah, they form a, a mosaic. But also it represents the shape of it as well, doesn't it? So it's kind of like a duality of why we wanted to make a mosaic. I think there was this idea of sort of like the break in the epidermal layer both of the flower and then it resonated with me with stretch marks. I've always had stretch marks, but also this idea of the beauty, a fleeting beauty coming from a, a breaking, a splitting up. And so I think that both myself and Lee picked up on this quote, any tulip thus changing its original color is usually ruined afterwards. And so I wanted Ollie to delight its master's eyes with this variety of color before dying, as if to bid him a last farewell. So it's almost like the beauty of this flower is for the eyes, the master's eye, so that they can behold it and then they disappear, they die, sort of like they, the pleasing of the male's gaze in a sense. The idea for the aesthetics of the image, we shifted from the idea of having, you know, the, the face, the human, we wanted the beauty to be held elsewhere, or this idea of breaking beauty. And the, the framing of the image, we also use a particular lens where it, super, it superimposes images. So it, it, may, it creates the layers, kind of like an epidermical layer, and it breaks up the image. 
So we wanted the image also to break as well as the things appearing in the image. The one that we got really early on with uh, the cordyceps is from this kind of, I think it's like early 1900s collection of short stories called The King in Yellow. The thing with the cordyceps fungus is that um, it gets inside ants and once it's inside them, it like alters their behavior. In the original book, The King in Yellow, people finding this play called The King in Yellow, and then when they read it, like they lose control of their mind or they start acting against their own interest. That was like a starting point. We discuss who was going to produce the picture, the image for uh, this micro. Conway had to go at both the yeast and the cordyceps. I think Conway was happier with the yeast images, but uh, not so happy with the cordyceps. So we nipped over and picked up the, the costumes <laughs> from Conway's house and we came back. And we spent a few days sort of playing around in the garden and in the backwoods. We liked the idea of this kind of wealth and luxury and I'm moving through this world and I can adapt it any way I know how. And I'm going to give you diarrhea along the way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's that kind of vibe. So you'll and definitely like, remember me. Yeah. yeah. And just that kind of bit of humour as well of just like combining filth and glamour together. Mm-hmm. I, I like John Waters is one of my like major influences. And so like that kind of, that philosophy is very present in most of my work as well. We kind of came up with the idea of headpieces, didn't we? Yeah. And this idea came really uh, early too. And the connection we had with the colours, because we were mentioning the blue colour. And at the end, it, it, it appeared that really our, our pictures uh, like uh, talked to each other. Along the process, it became uh, more and more fun because we, we evade, evade, evade from the microbes and we get more, we, we, we invented uh, and you, you pushed me to invent and uh, to escape from the, from the biology. Immediately, Archie was uh, imagining things and getting far from the, the reality of the microbe. For example, he chose this blue color uh, for Shigella, but Shigella is not blue, but that did not matter at all. I had this little chip potato paper, which when you look at the images of, or the representations of Shigella, it's very similar. So I made this kind of head mask that you can eat. So it looks like it's invading you and then coming into your mouth. And then at the same time, you're kind of spewing out stuff. We had a fantastic conversation in nature to start with because it it originated in Prince's Park. I had spent an earlier day on Arc Lane in a wonderful little shop called Freedomos that was filled with disco balls and go-go boots and (laughs) glitter. And I kept thinking, can you imagine this incorporated into a calendar photo and and how cool would that be? And then as Anna Laura and I got speaking and discussing this, we had very similar ideas about strombidium. So it was this idea of a disco, raving, glittery, high energy creature in the ocean. So the moment came to us, this coincidence that you had been to the shop and there was the disco ball that in a sense made us think of the mermaid and, and the all the scales of the mermaid and how yeah. they, they're reflective. And similarly, sort of like we exchanged some, some stories around the, the mermaid and the, the grim tale of the mermaid of how there's a tale of incompatible love. But we wanted to reverse the story a little bit. The, the mermaid as this uh, agent of herself and giving up the tale for uh, dancing feet. They bleed through the night, but because they're dancing all night. So this hedonistic creature that makes itself into a hybrid for the love of, you know, lights and disco and, and being out. With Wolbachia, it was interesting because we spoke with Rod about Wolbachia, which was interesting to have Rod's perspective and Yasmin's perspective because they were both accurate, but they were done from a different lens. Yasmin kind of thought of this idea of the um, stiletto murderer and it works so perfectly and like it just makes complete sense of having this shoe that was invented by men to make women look sexier using that shoe to kill a man is kind of incredibly hot and badass and I kind of decided in my head I was like she seems like a very arrogant full of herself kind of thing 
Our kind of initial conversations were about like sort of uh, paganistic uh, kind of relationships with the land and uh, about kind of non-human kind of networks of organizing intelligence or Mm non-human intelligences did we talk Mm -hmm. about? Yeah, technologies, yeah. I'm thinking about like kind of kitschy imagery. Yeah. And I think our very, with very phones. first... With yeah. With, yes, and like phone lines. And we really wanted to do an image that we were both part of that was more about yeah. showing that network of communication than showing one person. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then Liverpool's risk level went up. <laughs> and suddenly we weren't allowed to meet between households. Yeah. So I was drying some alliums from the garden. It made me think of the rosettes of parasites when Leishmania kind of clumps together. They, f- they call them like rosettes, which is kind of cute. So I thought it would be nice to have a cell, a human cell, which is getting surrounded by all these Leishmania clumps and kind of is dying or kind of knowing that it's about to die. So I'm wearing like a Ghanaian print dress and then there's the background that's also got like the Ghana prints but the Ghana print is like me bringing my heritage but also like bringing in like what got me interested in Leishmania and the fact that Leishmania is in Africa like present in Africa which is something that's not really spoken about. I'd never done any kind of yeah performative work before so you know I, I was kind of saying like right what are we going to do how are we going to get organized let's take everything down that we need and you were like we'll go there <laughs> and the performance will happen <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like what what but we need that. i need a list and uh, yeah <laughs> it was like a joy and a relief to work in a completely different way where not everything needs to be yeah allocated and measured in some sense or another because mm-hmm. I, I think what happens in a lot of these sort of collaborations is like scientists just sort of feed ideas to the artists and they don't sort of participate and they don't take anything back and I think we sort of had the opportunity to be involved and then take something back and learn something about what it's like to you know perform as an artist which probably it doesn't usually happen that in that sort of bi-directional way. I wish I could get out more. <laughs> I I wish I could escape my scientific world more and embrace more of this cross-fertilization of ideas and experiences. Yeah, we're definitely (laughs) outside our comfort zones. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's quite nice. I'm not like, especially having this kind of thing happen in lockdown where you can just easily stay in your little bubble and not do anything new. It's really nice to be able to have conversations with Dee and just learn about things that I've always been interested in but not been able to have access to. I can say that I've learned a lot about myself um, in terms of, and actually how human parasites and viruses are, there's a humanity to it that I've learned that they, we're, we're a universe in ourselves really. I think the smaller you get and the more you get into the minutiae of the world and this ecosystem and this planet, the more you can realise and see how every single action that is taken, every single environmental change or anything has a significant impact on everything else. Our concept of ourselves as humanity separate from the rest of, like as a separate entity from microbial life is like illusory and really destructive. Microbes underpin the life of the planet. If we study them, we can break all of our barriers uh, as human, <laughs> all the barriers uh, we have. I think part of this project isn't just about um, the shigella or the cowpox or the other things. It's also about getting to know people. And yeah. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. But the most important is that really we had, we had really real fun. It was, it, was, it was great from the beginning to the end. And I'm not, I hope it's not the end. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I really miss working with these wonderful creatures. Are you talking about the artists or the microbes? Uh, The microbes, babes. Whoever wants to work with humans anyway. Do you know what I'm saying, girl? Yeah? Uh, (laughs) Now, I have to make a really quick apology because I said that Sophie was from Liverpool 
and she's not. She's actually from Manchester. So I do apologise, Sophie. Um, my latest intelligence through this year uh, has just told me otherwise. And so my apologies go out. But that's the joy of liveness, people. We get it wrong every single second. Yep. But these things happen. Um, I'm sure she'll forgive you with time. I've got a question for you, though. So this is from Rainy Day Video. And the question is, how did you find taking on all the new scientific info for the project? Uh, I mean, I didn't take all of it on because I only worked with three of the scientists and two pictures. Um, but I found it, I, I found it fun. I, I, I found it fun because I kind of struggled at school to engage with science a lot, to be honest, a lot actually. Um, and finally I was able to explore it in a creative way. So it, it was, it was able to educate me in things that I didn't necessarily know about. Um, and, and that's why I felt it was quite important really, because I was able to have fun with it but yeah I I don't know it's 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 a weird one I think how did I find it I it's a bit of a funny question I I found it fun I found it fun it, it, I don't know if I had enough time though like <laughs> th uh, you know we've been doing this what three months so to learn you know these some of these doctors have been doing it for like 10 years 20 years you know, so they're, they're experts upon experts upon experts. So I, you know, I, I wonder about the time limits, but you know, the water drops, I have a much more broader knowledge. So yeah, I found it fun. And I found it important to do it the way I needed to do it, not the way that most science is taught. There you go. Does that answer the question? Good. <laughs> I hope that answers the question for you. It was fun. Uh, now, a little last section of the microbial fashion police. It is our last section. Um, and then we've got some YouTubers coming up, which we're really looking forward to because these two have been through a right crisis lately. But before that, let's go to autumn. So we are into September. Strongbidium purpurium. For those of you at home, strongbow. <laughs> but they're plastic eaten bacteria. I mean, it's very different to all the other microbes we've spoken about so far, because this is actually something that really helps us and we want to be best mates with it and go out clubbing with it. I'd definitely be friends with them, but that's not to say that everybody else would. Like, it looks quite menacing. The whole idea with the masks is like, you know, going to protests and protesting for, you know, saving our planet and us doing better for the planet. It's a, it's a nightclubbing activist. I think autumn's the time that, you know, you can't really be sitting outside in beer gardens. So it's, you know, time to go in, have a secret rave, get the lights out kind of time. Well, I also like the, um, the fact that they've made a nightclub in their home, which is very appropriate. It's very current now. I, I really want to party with this bacteria. Tammy is bringing out the, 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 the whole sass. It's just pure sass. Mm -hmm. This is a line that I wouldn't always wear. I mean, I would wear the other one. So like we'll back here in some insects like chain, like changes the sex determination and we'll back here can kill off like the male eggs. So then oh. the insects will only produce female offspring. It feminizes <laughs> um, like male insects as well. I didn't see this before. But actually, there's a there's almost like a really cool uh, bouncer vibe to this character. <laughs> like you could imagine them on the door taking tickets to their own nightclub. Yeah, just like the amount uh, of strength. And I think if if we were to, I don't know, have to pick a picture that was scary, I would say this one because those heels. Can you imagine? Oh. Oh my god. Honestly. Gosh. So this is the last of autumn, isn't it? And I feel like it's a very bright way to leave autumn and go into what is a very dark and cold season. It's got that, that feeling of like, winter's gonna be fine. Just talk to the trees. Communicate, don't forget about your friends. So here we've got the, we've got microsial networks. So it's the fungal networks under trees and shrubs and bushes. It just helps in the communication between 
trees, the transport system for food, nutrients. So it's just a nice way to bring in a little bit of positivity amongst you know all the parasites. I really love the serenity of this picture. I think like looking at it, I just want to like pick up my phone and like call friends that I've not spoken to for a while. It, it feels again very apt to the time as well. You know, we're communicating through all sorts of channels now. And it's quite nice to just see a phone. I actually really appreciate the love and the mm -hmm. pleasure in this picture. So, a little corrections corner there. Only raving that, you know, fits with the government advice is what you should do. You know, don't do anything else. Don't listen to us. Um, but up next, funded by the Microbiology Society and Arts Council England, we bring you your favourite, I'm sure, YouTubers. Um, I've heard that they've been in a spot of bother recently, but we still love them. So we've got the endosymbiotic love agony aunts. Um, so over to you guys. She is always, she always fucking late. Always late. Yasmin! Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, she probably got the fucking sound off now. Great. Oh my god, yeah. Please can you make me a drink? Um, I'll be done in like maybe like even 10 minutes, you know. I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I've got the, um, I have a video with RJ and I'm gonna die like 15 years with that man. Oh my god, kill me. Okay, yeah. Can't wait to see you tonight. Love you. Bye bye. <sighs> Hello, darling. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Hi. Yeah. Hi. How are Funny you doing? Funny that. Because uh, you're the one that's late. Oh, I'm fine, God. babes. I'm fine. We're just gonna have to get on with it, okay? Because we haven't yeah. got time. Hi, guys. Welcome back to your favourite YouTube channel. And what is it, Yasmin? It is Endosymbiotic Love Letters. You know, your special agony aunts. Um, so we asked for questions and we've got a little collection. So uh, why don't you start, Yasmin, considering this specific question is your field of expertise. So this question is from Sheila from London. And she asked, how many outfit changes can a parasite like Leishmania do in one night? Leishmania can have lots and lots of outfits. I'm sure you've got lots and lots of outfits as well, so don't be jealous. So there are two main outfits that are mastigoid form and also the pro mastigoid forms. So these outfits are very different, I would say. So in the mastigoid form, which is in the humans, it's very, you know, plump cute ready to party and then the pro master goat stage it's very it's you know slender has got a little bit of a tail it looks cute but even within the pro master goat stage it has different outfits you know has different accessories that it can kind of put on take off as it likes and so within this stage it has different outfits to be nectomonads, procyclics, haptomonads, leptomonads and metacyclics. So don't be jealous, you know, just add more accessories to your wardrobe and you'll be, you know, you'll be like Leishmania. Question two. I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my Mil god. We yes. love you. Now let's get to my dilemma, not mine. Mildred's from Blackpool's dilemma. I have recently come out of a long-term situationship, Ooh, very nice, and was wondering how to get Warbuckia interested in me. They sound like a handful and I love it. Well, Mildred from Blackpool, I can tell you that if you like a handful, then you have gone to the right place because Warbuckia is the dirtiest, most raunchy, most ravenous underground sex fiend out there. Having said that, I don't really think it's good for long term. I do know that it's a man hater. So you're already in there, babes. But you do have to be a little bit dirty. Cause, not um, the not the good dirty. Not like, yeah, you not, know, not, not sexy. The good, I mean, you have to be the good dirty as well. You know, don't shower for a very long time. Because Wolbachia hangs out with all the insects. 
So, you know, you get them around and then we'll back you will also come. Question here is from Phyllis in Essex. And she says, should I be jealous that my dog got infected with leash mania and not me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Being jealous. Being jealous. Be very jealous that the leash mania chose the dog who for you, you know? Uh, but I think you should probably be quite happy that the leash mania chose dog over you because, you know, you are human, you are the host, you are a lovely, lovely human being, and the dog is a dog. It's a reservoir. So it doesn't really matter, you know? The dog could be hanging out with the leash mania, being infected with it. And you could hang out with the dog and be near Leishmania without being infected. So I think that's a win-win. You don't die. The dog dies, not you. So yeah, be jealous, but be happy. Mm. Right then, uh, question four. Hi, love your show and you guys are amazing, except for the days that you are really annoying to listen to. Well, thanks Tyra from Inverness. My dilemma, Tyra says, is I drunkenly hooked up with a diarrhea, whew, causing microbe last weekend. <laughs> How do I know if it was Giardia or Shigella? And how do I approach them for a date? Wow, Ooh, Tyra oh. from Inverness, I can tell you that you need to go and get tested, babe. Because, well, I'll just be honest, it's not great to have inside the body. Great date, you don't want to linger there for too long. So either way, you know, have your fun. Get the syringe. The syringe is great. You're going to have a magnificent time. Very pleasurable, okay? Just don't hang around too long. I recommend a doctor or a scientist like moi to get you some medication because you'll want to get that rid of that because you really don't want it to get to the brain babes okay no. you really don't want it because once it's there you are screwed no. moving on moving on oh so i got this question it says hi it's rudy long time listener first time caller <laughs> so oh! okay so what does he have to say so he said I am a farmer in Somerset. I'm not trying to impress the ladies, but I have over a hundred cows oh! um, that I personally milk daily. Wow. Ooh. Mm. How do I protect my cows from cowpox? Would, this be, would it be a good idea to start some research myself? If so, how? Rudy, I do not think you should do any of the research yourself. You know, leave that to the researchers, you know, who are getting paid to do that. Us. But us. yeah, us. You know, you can you can pay us to do some some of the research. We love cows. Yeah, Ooh. but at the same time, don't don't be worried. Your cows are fine. The immune system immune system can handle it. They can handle the cowpox. They will be fine. They will just fight it off. And before you know it, they're you know back to being milked. And finally. Because, you know, we need to wrap things up. Mm -hmm. Bacteria from South Shields. Ooh, we have a bacteria yes. phoning in. Uh, they've called in to ask, I bought your calendar. Thank you very much. It's going to go to a great cause. Mm -hmm. um, and I am now weirdly terrified and in love with Bacteria Farge. For people at home, it's actually Bacteria Phage. But I prefer Farge. As a streptococcus, oof, streptococcus, how will I get chosen and penetrated by bacteriophage? And how can I prepare myself for this encounter, if you know what I mean? Yasmin will know more about this than me. I will be honest, eh? But I will say anyone. this, that bacteriophage likes it a little bit rough and in their approach, you need to be very forward. So Yasmin, explain away the bacteria vage. So bacteriophage is a very, very exciting creature to spend the evening with. Bacteriophage, what, what they usually do is they just creep up on you in the middle of the night. They've got numerous legs. They just jump on you. They're just there, ready. And Oof. you know what's gonna happen. Oof. Penetration. This bacteriophage on you 
will just kind of, you know, have the tail. In, so they've got a tail in the middle, very... Mm. So basically, this tail slowly, slowly screw, penetrate you, just basically destroying you, but you know, you might like it. And just, it releases all this amazing RNA, proteins, all this good stuff to basically turn you into a slave. So all of this stuff inside of you makes you replicate them. It's actually, it's really enjoyable, but you'll slowly die. Some people love it. And you know, I can tell you it was really fun, but you don't want that all the time. So I would say, you know, enjoy it, protect yourself, but don't have that every day. Well, I have to say that it has been a wonderfully enjoyable and vastly interesting experience today. Um, what I have noticed, Yasmini, is that um, a lot of them aren't long-term relationships, are they? All of these things are, are very short-term fun. And on that note, I think we should say goodbye. If you've got any more questions, you know, related to this, please message us and we will answer it on our next show. Well, that's all we have time for. Um, so we'll see you next week. God, they are bitchy. Ugh. I wonder how long they can actually like continue to tolerate each other. But unfortunately, this is all we have time for. I know, and it's so sad. I'm feeling very sad. It's okay, it's okay. We'll be back next week, um, and we've got a very good topic. So we'll be comparing Boris Johnson and Jeffrey Epstein to H. Pylori. Um, yeah, what a fascinating instalment that will be. Okay, so before we go, I just have another apology to make. Because I found out that Sophie actually wasn't from Liverpool. She was from Manchester, but actually that's not true either. I found out that she is actually from Cumbria, but is based in Manchester. So if you're looking for her to do any films for you, go to Manchester. If you're looking to harass her, no, don't do that. Uh, so anyway, um, but the, I just want to say thank you to all of the special guests, artists, scientists, filmmakers, technicians, marketing team, producers, uh, the parasites, the bacteria, the, the microbes, everything that's been involved in this fantastic project. Um, but especially thank you to you at home because I know that you're about to go and buy a calendar and Yasmin's going to tell you how. Yes. So last minute plug. Um, do not forget to get your hands on our calendar. Um, they are all on our website. So that is endolove.com slyrabbit.net um, and remember 50% of that will go to the outdoor project so yeah great Christmas present and great Christmas present to yourself as well um, so yeah thank you so much for watching everybody we've been Yasmin up there down there across I don't know where uh, we're on zoom um, we Yasmin across somewhere RJ endosymbiotic live love live and uh, have a beautiful Christmas have happy holidays, stay safe, stay fabulous, stay warm. See you soon.